Ladies and gentlemen, Vladimir Tarasenko is a New York Ranger. You heard that correctly. We were talking about how this team needs to add a big-time right winger, at least one big-time right winger uh, for the stretch run here and hopefully for a lengthy playoff run as well. And they got their guy, Vladimir Tarasenko, an elite right winger in this league, a former Stanley Cup champion, a big-time playoff contributor throughout his career. We're going to break down this trade from every conceivable angle on today's episode of Locked on New York Rangers. Welcome back, Blue Shirts fans, to episode number 769 of the Locked On New York Rangers podcast. I'm your host, John Chick. Just want to thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. And today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. And before I get too much ahead of myself and, and talk about why I think this is just an outstanding trade for the New York Rangers, I think we should just go through the whole trade here real quick at the start of the show because there were a lot of moving parts uh, moving back and forth between the New York Rangers and the St. Louis Blues. So the full trade, the Rangers obviously get Vladimir Tarasenko, and that's obviously the, the big catch of this trade, but they also get a defenseman in Nico Mikola. Uh, they get both those players from the Blues in exchange for Sammy Blay, Hunter Skinner, a 2023 first-round pick, and a fourth-round pick. The Blues are also retaining some of Vladimir Tarasenko's salary. And right before I hit record here, uh, it looks like they're actually retaining 50%, which is the most, I believe, the league allows. When you trade a player away, the most of his salary that you can possibly retain is 50% of it. And that could prove very important for the Rangers as well because it kind of opens up the door for them to add you know, maybe a couple of other pieces. I get the feeling this is going to be their big move of the trade deadline season, but I don't think Chris Drury's done. I think you'll see him add uh, at least one more player. Uh, you know, they got a defenseman here, and I, I thought maybe they would add a sixth or seventh defenseman type. Uh, they seemingly have done that with Mikola. Uh, I think, though, we'll probably see them add, I would say, maybe like a fourth line forward type player, maybe Tyler Mott. That could be on the table. We will see. Uh, but we got to start today's episode by going to the man of the hour, and that is, of course, Vladimir Tarasenko. And just, uh, you know, again, examining this trade from every conceivable angle, but let's just start with Tarasenko himself and uh, what he brings to the table. And for starters, and I alluded to this just a second ago during the intro, playoff experience. This is a man who has played 90 Stanley Cup playoff games, uh, 41 goals and 19 assists in those games. He won the Stanley Cup with the St. Louis Blues in 2018-2019. And with Sammy Blay uh, heading back to St. Louis, uh, Tarasenko is one of two former cup champions along with Barclay Goodrow on the New York Rangers. I always think it's nice to have guys with that playoff experience, have guys with uh, you know a playoff success story, and obviously Tarasenko uh, applies there. Now, there was kind of an issue with Tarasenko in the Blues a few years ago. He was not named the team captain. Ryan O'Reilly was, excuse me. Um, but, you know, Tarasenko wasn't happy. Cooler heads seemed to prevail. They've been playing nice in the sandbox. And, you know, he's still been a productive player for them over these past couple of seasons here. And he has been an alternate captain in that time as well. So you got to figure he brings some leadership to the table as well. Now 31 years old. So one of the older players uh, on the New York Rangers and uh, maybe somebody that can kind of play a big brother type role to some of the younger players uh, that they obviously still have on their roster. Very young team that the Rangers uh, still have. Uh, and, you know, with Tarasenko, I think Vladimir Tarasenko, and I, I think of somebody that has just a nasty shot. Uh, I cannot wait to see him receiving passes from guys like Adam Fox, uh, Artemi Panarin, Mika Zibanejad. And in fact, that might be the top line for the New York Rangers right there. Uh, Panarin, Mika, and Vladimir Tarasenko. More on that in just a little bit. But, I mean, can you imagine some of the passes he's going to get from Adam Fox, you know, maybe on the power play, just winding back and blasting? I'm really looking forward to that. And this trade reminds me a little bit of the deal that the Rangers made with the Florida Panthers uh, before the trade deadline last season. And it, was, it wasn't quite this far before the deadline, but it wasn't like a zero-hour deal either. And, of course, you guys know that I'm talking about the trade that resulted in the Rangers uh, bringing Frank Vitrano. Now, obviously, Vitrano is not on Tarasenko's level. And with Vitrano, it only cost the Rangers a fourth-round draft pick. But the thing that both Vitrano and Tarasenko have in common is they're snipers, and they will not hesitate to shoot the puck, and I think the Rangers could really use somebody like that. The fact that Tarasenko is a right winger, that just makes it even better, because I really do feel like that has been the glaring weakness on the New York Rangers, as far as, you know, positions are concerned. I mean, obviously, they're set in goal. Uh, they're strong at center. They got three big-time centers right now. Uh, left wing, they're, they're pretty loaded there, too. The defenseman, you feel pretty good about that. Not so much at right wing. You know, beyond Kako, there, there's not really a whole lot there in terms of top six uh, options. 
options. But obviously, uh, this acquisition of Tarasenko uh, takes care of that. Uh, to just go through his career stats really quick here, again, 664 games for Tarasenko, all these games with the St. Louis Blues, 262 goals, 291 assists, so 553 points. He's a plus 57 for his career. He has averaged 17 minutes and 31 seconds of ice time, 252 block shots, 515 hits, 262 takeaways, 229 giveaways. And I also want to uh, discuss where exactly he fits in this New York Ranger lineup because uh, I think he got some options, and that's always a good thing. But when you look at how the Rangers have kind of been deploying their their team over these last handful of games here, you know, coming out of the All-Star break, uh, their top line from left to right has been Artemi Panarin, Mika Zibanejad, Jimmy Vesey. And when you say that out loud and you consider the fact that Vladimir Tarasenko is a right winger, I don't think it takes a rocket scientist to figure out where Vladimir Tarasenko is likely to land in this Ranger lineup. Now, it's always possible that they shuffle the deck. I mean, we know that Gallant and the Ranger coaching staff, uh, they don't hesitate to, you know, play around with their line combinations and move guys up and down and whatever it might be. But the fact that the Rangers are winning lately, uh, I think that kind of paves the way to this team not really wanting to make a bunch of wholesale changes up and down their lineup. I mean, look, you just traded for Vladimir Tarasenko, one of the best players available. Obviously, you're going to need to make some adjustments and do a couple of things here. But I think the solution is very simple as far as uh, what you do here. Uh, Jimmy Vesey, really like him. You know, turned out to be a nice under-the-radar signing for the Rangers. I don't really see him as a top-line right winger. And I get the feeling that in the Rangers' next game, which is Friday against the Kraken, we will see Vladimir Tarasenko on that top line right wing spot that has been occupied by Jimmy Vesey over the last handful of games here. So from left to right, the top line will be uh, Panarin, Mika, Tarasenko. And then uh, Jimmy Vesey, uh, you got to figure, you know, he'll stay in the lineup for sure. I mean, he's done nothing to, to lose his spot in the lineup or be a healthy scratch or anything like that. But you got to figure he'll probably move from the first line and drop down to the fourth line into the old spot that was occupied by Sammy Blay. And, uh, you know, he'll be out there on the fourth line probably for the foreseeable future, most likely with uh, LeCision and Cooley in the same game. Uh, power play. You know, I, I saw a couple people on social media wondering, like, okay, Ranger power play has been scuffling lately. They could use a spark. They could use, you know, pretty much anything. Uh, I didn't think they looked terrible in the power play against the Canucks, but bottom line is they were 0 for 3 uh, against, you know, a, a team with the worst penalty kill in the league. So, yeah, I mean, I, I've been saying I think they could use a shakeup. I, I floored the idea of maybe putting Philip Heedle onto the top power play unit in place of Vincent Trocek. I think putting Tarasenko there in place of uh, Vincent Trocek is something that we very well could see as early as the first game against the Kraken. You know, we'll see if they just throw him into the deep end, so to speak, and get him out there and make what should be a dangerous top power play unit that much more dangerous. Now you've got a sniper and, again, just a bona fide, excellent offensive player uh, in this league to, to join the party there, basically. It's also possible, though, and I wouldn't be shocked if the Rangers did this, that they start Tarasenko, at least in the early goings, the first couple of games here, they start him on the second power play unit instead of the first. They leave the top unit untouched because that's kind of what they do. You know, they they don't tend to make a lot of adjustments to that top power play unit unless somebody gets injured or, you know, something along those lines. But you could be looking at a situation where the same five players are on the top power play unit. Tarasenko is on the second unit. And I, I think doing that, you might see them more evenly distribute the power play time if they were to go down that road where, you know, the first power play unit isn't playing a minute 35 of every single power play that the Rangers get. It might be a little bit more even, you know, a minute 10 for the first unit, 50 seconds for the second unit, whatever it might be, because now that second unit becomes even more dangerous. You got Tarasenko, uh, Philip Hedl is on an absolute heater right now. The kid line, you know, they're feeling it right now. I would imagine Kako and Lafreniere would still be there. So that's four. And then either Truba or Miller, they'd probably leave Truba there. I'd kind of rather it be Miller, but um, I'm going to pick my battles when it comes to uh, how this Ranger team lines up. But bottom line, he'll be on one of the two units. I would, you know, I, I honestly think they might start him on the second unit and let him work his way up to the top unit. But I get the feeling that, you know, he, he'd probably get his way up onto the top unit in relatively short order. But if he is on the second unit, you'll see probably a little bit more of an even distribution uh, among the ice time for the Ranger two power play units. So uh, we're going to keep everything rolling in just a second here. I want to... Uh, Discuss the idea, the concept that maybe the Rangers sort of bought low on Vladimir Tarasenko. And I'm going to explain what I mean uh, by that in just a second. We're going to uh, compare and contrast Tarasenko 
to a couple of the other guys that were available on the trade market and how that might affect things for you know other teams looking to make a splash at the trade deadline. A whole bunch of other stuff as well. And uh, we will get to all that in just a second. But first, I got to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked on New York Rangers is brought to you by FanDuel. This year, the only app you need at your Super Bowl party is FanDuel, America's number one sports book. We're really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America, FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, that is even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. Download FanDuel now so you can bet Super Bowl 57 with a no sweat first bet. You'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet does not win. FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line to point spreads to who will score a touchdown. The FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe, secure, and super easy to use. Best of all, you can get paid your winnings instantly. So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. All right, let's keep everything rolling here. Like I said, just going to attack this uh, trade and just kind of break it down from every conceivable angle here. So I wanted to float out the idea that maybe this was the case of the Rangers uh, buying a little bit low on Vladimir Tarasenko because I saw, you know, you can never please everybody. You're never going to get 100% approval, um, you know, from from really any fan base, but certainly Ranger fans. You know, there's always some spirited de- debate going on on social media. Um, but I saw some people, you know, on Twitter saying, oh, well, you know, Tarasenko's numbers are down a little bit. You know, he, he's been struggling a little bit. He had the injury. All valid points. That That's all very true. Um, that might not be a bad thing because, first of all, his numbers this year, despite being subpar by his own very lofty standards, uh, Tarasenko's still having a very good season. He skated in 38 games with the Blues this year, 10 goals, 19 assists. So 29 points in 38 games. It's not a staggering total, but he's doing the best he can on, you know, obviously a subpar team over there and a team that's uh, really scuffled and just could not get their season off the ground. Uh, he's also a minus 18, average 17 minutes and 31 seconds of ice time, 15 block shots, 44 hits, 18 takeaways, and 11 giveaways. So those are numbers, once again, in a quote-unquote down season. And, you know, if the Rangers traded for Vladimir Tarasenko last season, like, let's go back to last season, and let's pretend that his contract was ending last season. And the Rangers were looking at rentals, because they brought in a bunch of rentals last year at the deadline. If they had gone after Tarasenko last year, it would have been tough, because in 75 games last year, Vladimir Tarasenko had 82 points. And that was only one year ago. I mean, Tarasenko was 30 last year. He's 31 this year. So I really doubt that his game has fallen off of a cliff or anything along those lines. I just get the feeling that you know, the injury probably derailed him a little bit. And, um, you know, the fact that he just doesn't have a very good team around him. And, and the Blues, one of those years where they're one of the more disappointing teams and just a situation where uh, they have not been able to uh, – to get their season off the ground, and you see the result now. They've lost five in a row. They're falling out of contention. And just like that, the Rangers able to pry Vladimir Tarasenko away from the Blues for what I thought was, once again, a very, very reasonable price. Uh, something else to, to keep in mind here as far as uh, the Rangers possibly buying low on Tarasenko, it's another situation where you know, the Blues are having a rough season, and it may also be why, once again, the Rangers were able to get him for a very reasonable return package. And we're going to get into the details of that return package in just a little bit. But, you know, when I saw that the Rangers were acquiring Tarasenko, I'm like you guys. You know, I'm watching Twitter and, oh, man, what did we give up? Did we have to give up one of the kids? Did we have to give up one of our big prospects? How many draft picks? On and on and on. The only real thing of consequence that the Rangers, uh, and we're going to look at this in greater detail in a minute, but the only real thing of consequence that the Rangers gave up here was the first round draft pick. But of course, uh, that's the price you have to pay. You know, you have to give up something to get your guy. And, um, you know, again, Tarasenko is a great player. And I thought the return package that the Rangers gave up was more than reasonable. So very, very happy um, about the Rangers once again landing Vladimir Tarasenko. Uh, Another question that I think comes up not too long after you realize that, yes, this is really happening. You know, you pinch yourself and, yeah, Tarasenko is coming to the New York Rangers. Uh, I think a question that's inevitably going to come up for everybody is is Vladimir Tarasenko strictly a rental for the New York Rangers? And my first inclination to that question would be, yes, he is. Um, I, I think it's going to be very similar to what we saw last year at the deadline when the Rangers, that's all they did was bring in rentals. You know, Cop, Mott, Braun, um, Vetrano. Uh, never say never. You never know when the Rangers could, you know, shuffle some money around, maybe trade away a couple of contracts. But 
you know, I, I do get the feeling that looking at what Tarasenko is currently making and looking at what he could end up making in free agency this offseason, probably going to be the same deal here. Tarasenko will be here for half a season, hopefully a Stanley Cup winning season, and then he'll more likely than not be on his way uh, in free agency to sign somewhere else. As far as where he would end up, your guess is as good as mine. Uh, but for some context as far as, you know, what Tarasenko is currently making, what he might end up making you know, in his next contract, right now, Tarasenko is in the final year of an eight-year, $60 million deal. So that's an average annual value of $7.5 million per season. Um, and as far as what he'll get next year, I mean, he might get pretty close to that number. It's hard to say for sure. You know, you have to look at so many different factors. Um, you know, one of them being who else is available in free agency. Is it a deep class? Is it a shallow class? And that's a different conversation for a different day. Um, but I, I would think maybe his price would go down just a little bit because he is 31 years old now, so he may not quite get $7.5 million per season, but he's going to get paid. I mean, I, I think for sure uh, you're looking at a situation where Tarasenko is going to get a pretty nice contract for himself, and I just feel like he's going to be out of the Ranger price range because you know, between this year, you know, this offseason, I should say, and next offseason, Rangers have a lot of players that need new deals. They're going to be getting some pretty significant raises. They're up pretty tight against the salary cap, even as things are. So as far as, you know, spending $6 million a year, let's just say $6 million for argument's sake, on Vladimir Tarasenko, I don't see it. I don't, I don't see how the Rangers can fit him in under the salary cap. So if you're a Tarasenko fan and you're really excited about this, and I qualify for both of those things as well. Uh, enjoy this while you can. And just keep your fingers crossed that this is the catalyst, uh, the big-time move that leads to the Rangers doing something pretty amazing this season. Because, you know, as much as I like Tarasenko and as cool as it would be to see him stick around and make some magic with guys like Panarin and Mika and everybody else, uh, just don't see it happening due to the, uh, the financials that will be involved there. Something else that I, I wanted to talk about here as far as how this affects the trade market is... I'm wondering, does this move by the New York Rangers here, does this cause other contending teams to panic a little bit and maybe overpay for a Timo Meyer, overpay for a Patrick Kane? It could because, you know, the dominoes are starting to fall a little bit. We saw Bo, Bo Horvat, excuse me, uh, get traded by the Canucks to the Islanders not too long ago. He was one of the bigger uh, trade ships available, certainly on the in the top 10, as is Tarasenko. As the players, big-time players available in trade talks, begin to dwindle a little bit. I think that you'll see teams, you know, start to line up and start to kind of battle and jockey for position as it pertains to, you know, putting together a big time trade package for Timo Meyer, for Patrick Kane, for pretty much everybody else who's going to be available at the trade deadline uh, this season. And, you know, once again, one of the big fish is gone in Vladimir Tarasenko. Another big fish is gone in Bo Horvat. And if you're a team like, I don't know, the Devils, the Canes, they're both ahead of the Rangers in the standings, do they now start to feel more pressure to land one of those big-time elite players? Do the Devils give up, like, everything, sell the entire farm to get their hands on Timo Meyer? It's entirely possible. I've mentioned Meyer in the past. I would have loved to have seen the Rangers get him. I mean, if I could just push a button and have one of these guys on the Rangers, he would be my guy. But the asking price, I think, was going to be absolutely enormous for Timo Meyer, and rightfully so. And this asking price for Vladimir Tarasenko is not that high. I mean, if, if I'm a Blues fan, I'm not too happy about this. We just gave away, you know, a, I mean, franchise icon might be pushing it, but you know what? He, he's going to go down as one of the better St. Louis Blues of all time. And obviously, he was there for what I believe, I'm, I'm pretty sure on this one, was that team's only Stanley Cup and was obviously a key contributing member uh, of that team. So, I mean, he's going to be a beloved player there for a long time. And to only get, you know, the one first-round draft pick and a uh, prospect and, and Sammy Blay, I mean, that's that's just not enough if I'm a St. Louis Blues fan. So looking at it from that perspective, it just makes me that, hap that much more happy and that much more excited uh, as a New York Ranger fan because we got our guy without having to give up anything too significant. You know, I just uh, mentioned Kane and Meyer a second ago. And I want to take that a step further and talk about, you know, Tarasenko, acquiring Tarasenko versus the possibility of acquiring Kane or Meyer. Because, you know, Ranger fans are divided here. Everybody's got their favorite. And obviously, you know, it, it would cost a different amount for all three of these players. But I kind of just want to compare and contrast and explain why this really might have been the way to go if you're the Rangers and you were looking to add, you know, one of the big fish at the trade deadline, which they now have done in acquiring uh, Vladimir Tarasenko. And we will do that in just a second. All right, so let's do some Tarasenko versus Kane versus Timo Meyer comparisons. There's other players out there too, but you know I think right now 
they're near the top of the list and you know, they all play right wing and that's the position of need for the Rangers. So I think it makes sense to kind of keep the focus on these three. Again, like I said, Meyer to me, the best player available at the deadline this season. Uh, he's the total package. Um, but I, I really think that the asking price is going to be astronomical and you're going to be seeing teams lining up around the block to make offers to the San Jose Sharks and ultimately uh, land Timo Meyer. So the Sharks, they've got some leverage too because uh, Meyer is a pending RFA for them. So they don't need to trade him and they can kind of use that in trade talks like, well, you're only going to offer us this, this, and that. Well, we don't really have to trade this guy. We could extend him and that could get a little bit messy. You know, the Rangers would have had to offer a lot more for Timo Meyer than they did for Vladimir Tarasenko. And I mean, honestly, at this point, everything else being equal, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that Meyer stays with the Sharks because if he doesn't get traded, that means he can't go to a team like the Bruins or the Canes or the Devils or one of these teams that's going to be in the Rangers' way, you know, come playoff time. So fingers crossed that, yeah, Sharks, you know, go ahead and get a deal done with Timo Meyer. You'll, you'll be our best friends if you do that. And as for Patrick Kane, you know, he's got the no move clause, and I would think that he would probably approve a trade to the New York Rangers. I mean, the Rangers, a young, hungry team, uh, had a great run in the playoffs last year, have a chance to win another Stanley Cup this year. Kane can come in and make himself an instant legend if New York, in New York, excuse me, if he can, uh, you know, lead the Rangers to the Stanley Cup final. And on top of that, he'd get a chance to play with his old buddy, Artemi Panarin. I can't see that happening now, now that the Rangers got Vladimir Tarasenko, but you never know what a player is thinking and where they want to be traded to. He's got the full no-move clause that could have always made things a little bit murky, and I just like the fact that the Rangers didn't wait around here. They got a deal that they liked, they pounced, and that's a good thing because, yeah, I mean, most of the trades, they go down right near the deadline every season, but the bottom line, the Rangers are in third in the Metro Division right now, and it's looking like they're going to be a playoff team, but... They're going to have to try to do everything they can to track down the Devils and the Hurricanes. I mean, you want to finish first or second because that at least gets you home ice advantage in the first round. Um, and the fact that they got Tarasenko now instead of waiting for an extra, how long away is the trade deadline? About three weeks from now? About three weeks. So instead of doing that, you get him here now. He can help you uh, sooner rather than later. And maybe you start to make up some ground on a couple of those teams that are ahead against ahead of the Rangers in the standings. And uh, that's obviously my hope that uh, that will be exactly what happens. Uh, I want to also discuss some winners and losers of this deal. Every time the Rangers do a trade, you know, big, small, or whatever it might be, uh, we, we kind of look at this, and I want to go through at least a couple here. And we also got to get to uh, Nico Mikola, which was the defenseman that the Rangers acquired in this trade. Going to talk about him because not exactly a household name, but going to share some information, some thoughts there too. But as for the winners and losers, this one is kind of tongue-in-cheek. Uh, but I'm going to say one of the losers of this trade was Jimmy Vesey because, hey, man, he got a chance to play with Mika Zibanejad and Artemi Panarin on the Rangers' top line. He'd been there for the last couple of games. We've seen Vesey move up, down, left, right, all over the Ranger lineup this year. Uh, he's been in the top six for certain chunks of time. Uh, you know, early in the season, they had him on the top line with Kreider and Mika. And now that Tarasenko's here, I think uh, Jimmy Vesey's days in the top six are probably numbered. Not that he'll care. I mean, he, he's not going to uh, whine and complain about that or anything like that. He'll drop down to the fourth line or do whatever he's got to do and bring his lunch pail mentality and, and be that pesky player that we know that he is. But um, yeah, I'm sure. I mean, hey, look, if I was a player in the NHL, which I'm not because I went undrafted this year, but if I was a player in the NHL, I would certainly embrace the opportunity to play with Mika Zibanejad and Artemi Panarin. It's a little bit of a fall off to go from that to Jake LeCision and Will Cooley. I mean, Cooley's a prospect and he's on his way, but yeah, that's obviously quite the downgrade for, for VZ. So uh, I guess you could say he's a little bit of a loser uh, in this deal. I would say also Libor Hayek because he just got put on waivers. You know, it certainly seems like uh, his time with the Rangers could be coming to an end, although if he clears, uh, it seems like he would head to the Hartford Wolfpack. I would say other losers from this, and this is probably the biggest losers from this deal, the fringe players, the guys that play certain nights, they're healthy scratches other nights, and I think the two that really come to mind here are Julian Gauthier and Vitaly Krasov. The two of them were healthy scratched in each of the last two games coming out of the All-Star break, and, you know, one of them could have gotten back in the lineup and, and you know, surpassed Sammy Blay and relegated Sammy Blay to being a healthy scratch. Yeah, they're not going to do that. Neither one of those players is going to get into the lineup at Vladimir Tarasenko's expense. I mean, they could still work their way back in there over a decision. Uh, if Cooley's involved in a trade a little bit later, then maybe over him, or maybe Cooley just comes out of the lineup for a game. You know, we'll see. I, I think Cooley should keep playing. But, yeah, those fringe players— the guys that are either in the lineup or healthy scratch, depending on what night it is, they are certainly losers from this deal as well. Uh, some winners. I, I think we got to go with the Ranger top six in general. You know, I talked about that a little bit earlier in the episode, but 
You know, part of the issue with putting the kid line together, especially if you call them the third line instead of the second line, is that it leaves a pretty big hole as far as your top line right wing spot and your second line right wing spot. Well, Vladimir Tarasenko is here now, and he can fill, you know, one of those two spots. He can probably play on the top line. And, um, you know, we'll see if, if the Rangers go with the kid line still as the third line. You've got Kako there. So I, I think for sure the top six uh, gets a boost from this because, you know, when the kid line is together and when they're the third line, you don't really know what to do at first line right wing or second line right wing. Well, now at least one of those two spots is taken care of because Vladimir Tarasenko is certainly going to be uh, filling one of those two spots and probably the top line with Mika and with Panarin. Another winner, Chris Drury. Got this deal done without giving up a massive haul. Didn't give away... Will Cooley, who I, when this trade was going down, I kind of had a feeling it might be Cooley. You know, the, the Blues would want a prospect from the Rangers. Didn't give up Cooley. Didn't give up any of the kids. Didn't even have to give up Vitaly Krausov, who feels like he could be on the way out still at some point. I mean, we'll see how things shake out there. But, I mean, Jury did this without giving up really a player of any value to this Ranger team. And also, we talked about the power play earlier. I'm going to say the Ranger power play is a win here. They've been scuffling. They could use somebody that just goes in with that bombs away approach and just uh, lets it rip, lets it fly at the net. Uh, everything else being equal, shoot the puck. Uh, I think the Rangers could certainly use a player like that. And they've got one in Vladimir Tarasenko. Uh, I also want to turn our attention now to uh, Nico Mikola because... He was the second player that was involved uh, in this trade, and, and certainly we want to give him uh, you know, his moment in the sun here as well and welcome him to the New York Rangers. Uh, I'll be honest, I, I had barely heard of him. You know, The name rang a little bit of a bell, but you know, if one of you guys had come up to me and mentioned Nico McCola and asked me which team he played for, I probably would not uh, have been able to figure it out, if I'm being completely honest here. Uh, but McCola, to just kind of give you his background, now 26 years old, he was drafted by the Blues in 2015 in the fifth round. He went number 127 overall. So uh, to begin with, give him props for even making it to the NHL. A lot of guys drafted in the fifth round are not able to pull that off. Uh, but he debuted with the Blues in 2019-2020. He was 23 years old at the time. Uh, he has played all 139 of his career games in St. Louis. Uh, in that time, four goals, 16 assists, a minus 12. So he would certainly seem to be uh, the stay-at-home defenseman type. Obviously not putting up any kind of offensive numbers, but that's okay. If you, if you do a good job in your own end, uh, that's just fine, especially if you're a depth defenseman, which uh, he will be with the Rangers. Uh, he's also averaged 16 minutes and 14 seconds of ice time, 188 block shots, 259 hits. And I'm curious uh, with Mikola here if he might, and perhaps sooner rather than later, get a start over Ben Harper. Now, I like what Ben Harper has done for this Ranger team. Uh, it, it's kind of an out-of-nowhere success story, a feel-good story. He was contemplating quitting hockey uh, this offseason. He didn't really have any offers. He had to sign a PTO, not with the Rangers, but with the Hartford Wolfpack. And he's worked his way up there, gotten a chance, and overall done all right, you know, as a third-pair defenseman. I think he's done fine. But he did have a little bit of a hiccup in the most recent game against the Canucks. You know, the Canucks basically just walked into the Rangers' zone, went to the net, and scored. And Ben Harper was on the ice for that goal and just did not uh, create any kind of resistance there. So I'm wondering, you know, they, they bring in McCola, who's been playing all season uh, for the Blues. Uh, does he get the first crack at it, uh, no pun intended, when the Rangers play the Kraken on Friday night. We will see. You know, they have a back-to-back, -back, so uh, maybe McCola gets one of the games. Maybe Harper gets the other one. We'll see how the Rangers look to play it, but I would not be shocked to see McCola uh, make his Ranger debut sooner rather than later. As far as McCola's stats for this year, 50 games, no goals, three assists. He's a plus two, averaging 16.39 of ice time per night, 68 block shots, 96 hits. And as far as his contract is concerned, uh, McCola is an impending unrestricted free agent. He is finishing a one-year deal worth $1.9 million. Uh, with Tarasenko, I'm pretty sure he's not coming back to the Rangers. With McCola, I don't think there's any chance whatsoever. I mean, they've got Ben Harper signed for really cheap as the possible sixth or seventh defenseman uh, for the next two years after this one. They've got five other defensemen who are all under contract. I mean, Miller's an RFA, but you figure they'll probably look to get something done uh, with him there. So they're set at defensemen. You know, Zach Jones is eventually going to get another chance, you would think. Uh, Matthew Robertson, they might eventually want to get a look at him. So uh, they have no reason to spend any money on McCola to keep him around uh, when they're looking pretty good at defensemen anyway and when money is obviously tight for this Ranger team right now. so But for the time being, it, it's a nice pickup. It's a nice little throw-in for this Tarasenko trade. And, you know, again, I haven't broken down hours and hours of film on McCola, but I'm looking forward to seeing him get his chance and seeing what he can do. And as far as him versus Harper for the sixth defenseman job, hey, may the best man win. Competition makes everybody better, and uh, we might be seeing an example of that uh, relatively soon here. 
I want to talk a little bit about Sammy Blay, uh, you know, being traded back to the St. Louis Blues. Kind of ironic. You know, they acquire him from the Blues. They send him back to the Blues. Uh, I feel bad for Sammy Blay and what's gone down with him over the past couple of seasons. I think with Blay, you're looking at somebody who's kind of a marginal NHL talent to begin with. I mean, he's never played like a ton of games in any single season. And when he is, you know, he's on the fourth line or you know, he's a healthy scratch in certain games. The fact that he got taken out on a dirty play last year took him from being like a marginal NHL player to somebody who just cannot seem uh, to keep up with the action. And I, I say that with with no malice or no uh, anger or ill will towards Sammy Blay. I'm just kind of talking about what I saw this season. And of course, uh, the Rangers sent him down to the Hartford Wolfpack for a conditioning assignment. He scores four goals in five games there, so maybe there's at least some hope. And maybe him going back to St. Louis, that might be the best thing that could possibly happen for Sammy Blay. Maybe they like him there. Maybe they end up giving him, you know, a short extension for a small amount of money after the season is over. Uh, Sammy the Bull, of course, is a UFA when the season ends. But, yeah, it, it does kind of close the book on, you know, a disappointing uh, Ranger tenure for Sammy Blay. And I'm sure he'd be the first one to tell you that. Uh, between two seasons for Blay with the Rangers, 54 games, no goals, nine assists. He was a plus four. Uh, averaged 10 minutes and 37 seconds of ice time, 24 block shots, and 156 hits. The Rangers also send Hunter Skinner to the St. Louis Blues. And to kind of just give you some background on Skinner here and just kind of go through everything that the Rangers gave up here. Uh, he was a former fourth-round pick by the Rangers back in 2019. It feels like his stock has dropped a little bit because I can remember talking about both this offseason and the one before that maybe Skinner could be, you know, a, a roster long shot. He could surprise everybody and maybe make the opening night roster. We've seen the Rangers do that with other defensemen, so maybe Skinner had a shot at it. Um, but yeah, you just haven't heard a whole lot of buzz around Hunter Skinner recently. And in fact, he only played eight games with the Wolfpack this season. He's played the other 22 games, uh, with the Jacksonville Icemen of the ECHL, which is the level below the AHL. So yeah, I mean, it just feels like his stock is, is really dropped. I mean, not that like he was ever like this, like ultimate prospect for the Rangers, but you know, fourth rounder, there was a little bit of buzz around him. I think when he first came here and, uh, just, just nothing recently. So they give him away. For what it's worth, in his 30 games with the Wolfpack and Iceman combined, uh, Skinner had 30 games, three goals, seven assists, and um, maybe the Blues see something that they like in him. Maybe we even see him later this season because the Blues seemingly are falling out of contention, so maybe they'll give him a shot on their NHL roster and just see what they have. Uh, time will tell there. Uh, the other aspect of everything that happened is that Libor Hayek was placed on waivers by the New York Rangers. I would think he'll probably clear um, but it certainly seems like, you know, the Rangers are replacing him with Nico McCola, the defenseman that was acquired in this trade alongside Vladimir Tarasenko. Um, you know, Hayek played 110 games with the Rangers over the past five seasons. He is still just 24 years old, but, you know, he was part of that ill-fated Miller and McDonough to Tampa Bay trade, and obviously it hasn't really worked out. I mean, with Hayek, it feels like the best you can hope for is, like, average six defenseman play. And, you know, that that's kind of his ceiling. I, I just don't know that he's ever going to be much more than that, but we'll see. Um, you know, if he clears and he stays with the Ranger organization, organization, that's completely fine. He can go down to the Wolfpack, maybe build his confidence there. Hey, actually get a chance to play some hockey. He's been a healthy scratch for God knows how long at this point because Harper, you know, took over his job. Um, but we'll see. If he sticks in the Ranger organization, that's fine. If somebody claims him, that might be the best thing for Hayek. He might get a new chance with a different team. Uh, we will see what happens there. As far as just some closing thoughts on the whole thing, though, this is an A+. plus. This is an excellent move by Chris Drury, and I think Tarasenko is really going to work out nicely here. Um, I, I love the playoff experience. I love the fact that he's a former cup champion. I love the fact that the Rangers did not give up anything of serious consequence here. You know, Sammy Blay didn't work out. He was going to get squeezed out of the lineup one way or another. Hunter Skinner, again, not an elite prospect for the Rangers. Uh, you know, the, the first round draft pick is the one thing significant that they gave up. But look, I mean, you got to give up something. It's Vladimir Tarasenko. He's been a star in this league for a long time. Made the all-star team uh, this season. You got to give up something. And, and that was the only one big thing that the Rangers gave up. And they gave up the one first round draft pick, but they still have another one. So it's not like, you know, they... They're they're in dire straits as far as you know this upcoming draft this year. So uh, yeah, just just really excited here. Like the Nico Mikola aspect of this trade as well. You know we'll, we'll see if he gets a chance to crack the lineup. One more thing that I'll say to fans of this New York Ranger team though, give this a chance to work. If if there's a situation where the Rangers are playing the Kraken and we get Panarin and Mika and Tarasenko, and 
you know, there's one or two shifts. The first one or two shifts of the game for that line, they don't really do anything. They don't produce any scoring chances. Let it play out. It might not happen instantaneously. Maybe it will. That'd be awesome. But if it doesn't, give it a chance to play out. Don't go on social media and say, oh, my God, Tarasenko's awful. We should have got Kane. We should have got Meyer, this, that, and the other thing. Just give it a chance. And I'm saying this as a reminder to myself just as much as everybody else because we're Ranger fans. Sometimes we all kind of have knee-jerk reactions. We want instant results. Um, give this a chance to work, and I, I think it's going to work out nicely, and everybody's going to be pretty pleased uh, when this ends. The only other thing that I want to mention here, obviously the Rangers struck this uh, blockbuster deal, bring in Vladimir Tarasenko. I get the feeling, uh, that being the case, we probably got some new viewers, some new listeners here, whatever it might be, uh, for today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers. Stick around. We have a ton of fun covering this team. Uh, it is the only daily New York Ranger podcast in existence. We do this five days a week, every week. Um, we were in this together, the highs, the lows, everything in between the playoff runs, uh, all the exciting wins, all the heartbreaking losses. We're, we're on this crazy Ranger roller coaster together. So, uh, stick around. And those of you that have been with me for some time, you guys are the best. Thank you so much. Very much looking forward to, I mean, really the rest of the season, but especially Friday night's game against the Seattle Kraken to see how the Rangers deploy Vladimir Tarasenko and, uh, how he does in his first game as a member of the New York Rangers. But that will do it for today, guys. Once again, if you'd like to get in touch with this podcast, please send an email to LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Once again, that is LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. And definitely give us a follow on Twitter as well, at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. Once again, that is at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. And definitely subscribe to Locked On New York Rangers YouTube channel. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you next time.